in my previous video i told you that i would teach you how to model these assets and also i will give away the whole asset pack for free so let's get started so you can download this asset pack from my gumroad page for free the link is in the description it has all these assets which are these columns arches different moldings some patterns ornaments and balustrades and now comes the modeling part so first we are going to create this structure so for this i will press shift a and add a plane then i will press tab to go to edit mode and turn on x-ray view by clicking on this icon so press e to extrude the vertex and then x y or z depending upon the axis on which you want the extrusion and then extrude these vertices like this you can always change their shape if you want Then I will press Alt R to add a loop cut and move it like this. Then press Ctrl B to bevel this edge. Move the scroll wheel of your mouse to add more segments. Then I will also bevel this edge by pressing Ctrl B and then from under this menu you can change the number of loop cuts. For this 20 or 30 is enough. Then in profile type click on this custom button and choose crown molding preset you can also choose any other preset if you want then go back to object mode and then right click and choose shade auto smooth i will also press ctrl a to apply all transforms and then under object set origin to geometry if you want the sides to be filled with a face you can go to edit mode and turn on x-ray view Select these vertices and press F and you can do this for all sides. Then you can add an array modifier to it, change the X and Y value and enter any count value that you like. And now it's time to add some embellishments and patterns. You can look for some reference from Pinterest or from any other website. There are tons of different styles that you can make. But I will make this one. So for this I will add a plane. Then go to edit mode. And then extrude these vertices like this. Then you can press Alt D to make an instance of it. And then every changes that you will make on the original one will also be applied on this one. This can be a very useful trick if you want to make some seamless patterns like this one. Then I will delete the duplicate and rotate the pattern 90 degrees on X axis. Then press A to select all the vertices and press E to extrude. And then again in object mode shade it auto smooth, apply the transforms and set origin to geometry. And then you can add an array modifier to it. Then I will place this pattern onto this molding that we just made. You can scale it along X or Y axis to fit it in the shape. Then apply the modifier and then go to edit mode. Now I will delete these extra vertices. Make sure to turn on X review while making the selection. And press X to delete these vertices. Then I will select these two vertices and press F to fill in a face. Now repeat the steps for the other side. And now it's time to make the second pattern. So for this press Shift A and add a UV sphere. Then shade it smooth and go to edit mode. Turn on X-ray view and select the upper half of the vertices. And press X to delete them. Then also select these vertices and delete them. So now we have this kind of shape. Then scale it along Z axis and on X or Y axis. And then again apply all transforms and set the origin to geometry. Then again press Shift A and add a torus. Right click and shade it smooth. Rotate the torus, move it up and scale it along Z axis. Just like this. Then press tab to go to edit mode and select the upper part of the torus in X-ray view and press X to delete these vertices. 
then select these vertices and press S, Z and 0 on the numpad or you can rotate them manually to straighten them out. Then select the other half and also delete them because we don't need them. Then to make the arrow, I will press Shift A and add a plane. Then in edit mode, right click and merge vertices at center. This way we only have a single vertice. Then from top view, press E to extrude the vertice in an arrow like shape. I will only make the half arrow and then add a mirror modifier to it. Rotate the arrow by pressing R, X and then 90 and then press F to fill it with a face. You can fill this gap by moving this vertice. And then apply the modifier in object mode. Then press E to extrude the face in edit mode. Then right click and shade it auto smooth. Then scale it up and move it beside the pattern. And make sure they are perfectly aligned. Select both of them and press Ctrl J to join them and then again apply the transform and set the origin to geometry. You can also apply an array modifier to it. And then it's time to place this pattern onto the molding. To place it perfectly onto the molding, I will tweak both molding and the pattern in edit mode. Then to bend the pattern, I will add simple deform modifier to it. Click on bend on Y axis at a 45 degree angle. And now we have to fix this arrow. So for this I will go to edit mode and in face select mode select the face of the arrow and just bring it forward. You can experiment with different angle values and see what works best for you. Then I applied the modifier and rotated the top vertices of the pattern just to make them straight. And now it fits perfectly. And then again add an array modifier and then scale them on X or Y axis if necessary. And just by following this method I have made some more patterns which are available in the asset pack. And now it's time to model some columns. So for this press shift A and add a cylinder. And from this menu enter 12 number of vertices. Then scale it on Z axis and go to edit mode. Press R and add loop cuts on the bottom and top of the column. Then select these faces and press I to insert. From this menu make sure that individual is selected. Then select extrude faces along normals and extrude these faces. Then add a subdivision service modifier to it and increase the number of levels. Then again press add to add a loop cut and move it on top and bottom. And the basic shape of our column is done. To add some more detail, I will go to edit mode and select this edge loop. Press alt left click or go to select and select edge loop. Then press E and Z to extrude on Z axis. And then add an edge loop in between by pressing R and then S to scale. You can also bevel this edge by pressing Ctrl B to make it more round. Then again select this top edge loop and press S to scale it inwards. And then again extrude on Z axis and you know the steps. You can also make the base by using a cube. And you can take as much time as you want to refine this column. I am doing it quick just for the tutorial. And then you can scale it down and place it beneath this molding. And add an array modifier. And that's how I made the arch in the previous tutorial. I've also made a twisted column which can be made by adding a circle and then duplicating it two more times in the edit mode. Right now they're not perfectly aligned but you can take your time to do it. Then select these middle vertices and press X to delete them. You can extrude these edges to fill in the gap between them. Then go to object mode and add a skew modifier to it. Increase the skew value and also increase the iterations. It's not perfect because I did not arrange the circles perfectly. But as I said, you should take your time to refine it. But it is perfect in the asset pack. I've also made some arches which are pretty easy to make. You just have to add a cube 
and then go to edit mode. From here press Ctrl B to bevel this edge. From this bottom menu add as many segments as you want and select custom profile type. Then make a stair like steps in the graph. Make sure to click on this button to make it linear or straight steps. And then we are going to use this spin tool. And you can see if I use it, it's not working properly because you have to press shift and then right click to move the cursor. And choose a location where it is spinning the top face of the circle perfectly. And then press S, Z and 0 to make it straight. And then I duplicated this arch and then mirrored it on Y axis. And then adjust their position, make sure there is no space between them. And then press Ctrl J to join them. Then in X-ray view select the bottom vertices and extrude them in Z axis. For some variation you can place a cube under the arch and then bevel the bottom face of the cube and select the crown molding profile. And then place some columns under it. And now the last model for today, balustrades or railings. You can also find a lots of references for this. I will model a simple one and almost every design can be made by using the following method which I am about to show you. So first go to front view by pressing 1 on the numpad and then press shift A and add the reference image. Then add a plane and go to edit mode. Press M and merge at center. And we have a single vertex. So move the vertex onto the reference image and we will be extruding this vertex to make the design. So press E to extrude the vertex and then X, Y or Z depending upon the axis on which you want the extrusion. For this round shape, I will first extrude the vertex to the center and then at the end. And then move this middle vertex to the curve and then press Ctrl B to bevel this vertex. And same goes for this one. Extrude the vertex to the end of the curve, subdivide to add a vertex in the center, place this vertex on the curve and then bevel it by pressing Ctrl B. You can tweak the vertices manually if you want to make the exact shape as the reference. For the center part, I will first extrude the vertex at the end of the curve and then subdivide it and enter two cuts. This way we have two vertices for two curves. And then you can bevel them by pressing Ctrl B and move the scroll wheel of your mouse to increase the number of vertices. And once you have traced the complete shape, you can delete these middle vertices and then select the shape and right click to snap it to the cursor. And move it a little farther from the cursor and then use the spin tool. Make sure there is no empty space between the vertices. Then you can select the upper edge loop by pressing Alt and left click or by going to select edge loop. And then press F to fill it with the face. And do the same procedure for the bottom part. Then right click and choose shade auto smooth. To apply the textures without any problems, go to viewport overlay tab and check face orientation. Then go to edit mode and press shift N or go to mesh normals and recalculate outside. And now it's perfect. Then you can add an array modifier to it. And you can also make the top part by adding a cube on top and then bevel the bottom edges and select crown molding profile type. And we are done. And here is the complete asset pack that you can download from the link in the description for free. And that's it. 
if you found this video helpful make sure to give it a like subscribe to my channel and then i'll see you guys in the next video